Um, thank you for joining us again. I think this is week four of our FI Connects. So it is great to stay connected with you all. And um, we're just, you know, be in this process together. I look forward to this time every week. It's a nice little midweek afternoon kind of refresh. So hopefully you feel that way as well. Um, you know that we are here to learn, share, be together, and um, we just encourage you and um, hope to lift you up during this next hour and to provide you with some resources and supports, but also give you the opportunity to share and chat um, and just be together. So you might recognize me from our previous sessions. I'm Laura Albright, um, and we have a new face today, Emmy Coleman. She can introduce herself. Good afternoon. I'm Emmy Coleman, a colleague of Laura's from the Friday Institute, and we're so glad to be partnering to continue to bring you the FI Connects Elementary sex Sessions. So welcome today. We appreciate you being part of it. Yeah, so if this is your first time joining us, um, we are the Professional Learning and Leading Collaborative over at the Friday Institute, which is on NC State's Centennial Campus. Um, we are in Raleigh and of course hanging out at home now, but um, this is just a picture of our building and our campus to kind of get you familiar with where we come from. Uh, just a couple logistical items here. You're on Zoom, so and you're familiar with how that operates. You know that um, there is a mute and unmute button in the bottom left corner if you want to jump in. We have a small group today, only about um, 29 of us so far. So if you do want to jump in and chat um, and talk, you can, or utilize the chat, of course. Emmy will be monitoring the chat throughout and she will also be dropping in some helpful links and resources. So um, keep an eye on the chat as we go. You know that these sessions are of course research-based and they're designed for you and they are informal. So, um, and inclusive for all learners um, across the spectrum of where we're at right now. So today though, we wanted to kind of extend our conversation on supporting English language learners and um, exceptional children. So if you have been a part of our previous conversations, you know that last week we spent a good amount of time talking about elementary supports for our EC kids. Uh, and today we're going to be digging in a little deeper with uh, that lens, but also our English language learners. So I have some good resources to share with you. Uh, and then of course, uh, continuing to support our students with no access or limited access to technology, whether that be Wi-Fi or devices or whatever the situation may be. And then um, towards the end of our time together, we're gonna talk about how do we make learning stick? So we're in this remote environment and we know that um, there are not EOGs and we're not, you might not even really be grading anything. So how can we make learning meaningful and stick for our students despite um, the change of course? So I know some of you have introduced yourself in the chat already, but just for fun, what is your anthem? What is the song you're living by right now? Um, share in the chat that song title that best describes how you feel, you're feeling. Is it like living on a prayer or school's out for summer? or it's five o'clock somewhere, <laughs> or that, how are you feeling? <laughs> Hit me baby one more time. I mean, we're, we're out, we could be at all parts of the spectrum today. Oh, I love these. I'll rise up, ain't no mountain high enough. Oh, so good. I will survive. Yes, for sure. One day at a time. If you've been a part of our conversations, um, you know that we have been just talking about, we'll get through this. Um, our emotions may change throughout um, as the day goes on. And then, um, yes, I love it. Thank 
Thank you. We also like to take a little pulse check um, of where your district is at in this transition. Emmy is going to share a link in the chat right now for a Mentimeter. Uh, and you're going to respond to that Mentimeter with A, B, or C. So if you want to transition over to that link that she's going to share, where are you in uh, this transition? Are you so similar to the previous weeks with a little bit of a change? Um, no, no, noting that we have a small group today compared to our previous weeks, but it looks like um, most groups are falling right in the middle there where some instruction is online. Um, and then we have both ends of the spectrum as well. So that is good to know. And it also kind of guides our conversation because we definitely want to provide a balance um, in the supports that we're offering, depending on where you are. So what is next? Um, we can't exactly say that this remote environment is new. It's not fresh anymore. Uh, we have been in this kind of lost track a solid three weeks now and depending on if you've had your spring break or if you're currently on spring break, um, your weeks may look a little different. But what is next? You know, how do we sustain this? How do we move forward? And how can we continue to support all learners? So we're going to dive into the supports for English language learners and our exceptional children. And knowing that when with the research, a lot of this was interchangeable. Um, our supports for English language learners were similar yet different for our exceptional children and vice versa. Um, so the research is kind of interesting in how it breaks it down. So when we are working with our ELL or our EC students, we really want to be practicing empathy. Um, I would venture to say that a lot of you have got started to get to know your families more on that one-on-one -on -one personal basis if you hadn't already um, by connecting with them and or better understanding their needs during this time. I'm also you have folks at your building that are also connecting with them. Um, my navigation tools are some, for some reason, acting up on me. So that slide said things like practice empathy, um, release control, uh, letting students um, take time, the time that they need, have patience. And then of course, ask for help when needed. Emmy just shared where this research came from, um, and it came out of supports from provided by NYU, and it's a pretty lengthy document, but what is really nice about that is that there are um, very specific supports for teachers, what teachers can be doing right now, what students can be doing, and then what even parents can be doing, um, and how to connect with our families. She also shared um, two resources that we, I believe we may have talked about Google Voice before, um, but that is obviously through Google, which gives you a free phone number for utilizing for um, calls, texts, and voicemails. So if you want to communicate with your families without using your, giving out your personal cell phone, that is a nice way to do that. I know some, uh, districts utilize Remind and other communication tools, but if you don't, that is a nice option. Uh, Talking Points is another resource that she shared, and that is a service that translates the message that you send to your families directly into their home language, and then they can send you a message and it translates back into your home language. So I know schools out on the West Coast that use that a lot. I was just actually listening in on a webinar with um, Oakland Public Schools in Oakland, California, and that's strictly what they use to communicate with their predominantly Hispanic families. Um, so if that is helpful for you, the link is there for that as well. So some other research and how we're so providing these remote supports for our 
English learners and our exceptional children. This comes from Matthew Rhodes. Emmy will share the direct resources to where this came from, but really just um, remind, remembering that we're just setting and modeling clear expectations for our students. We're using consistent language. That is one thing that is so important for um, these subgroups is that we're using consistent language. Um, whether it be in our directions or our expectations of them, but even how we're referring to this time that we're in, being very clear and concise, but consistent is um, very beneficial for these students. We've talked a lot about chunking the content and making lessons shorter, <laughs> the shorter, the better. Um, was just doing a webinar with another team member and it was all around brain research and how middle school students can only take in up to four um, bits of information at a time. Elementary students is even less than that. So when we think about simplifying, we're, we're talking about simplifying even simpler than we might think in this online environment. I think a lot of folks have been saying too that you're offering check-ins and office hours um, just providing that communication either synchronously or asynchronously with students. Developing community um, any way possible. And it doesn't necessarily have to be content related. If you want kids to get on and just share, hey, what, did, what was something you were most proud of today? Or what was your favorite activity that you did this weekend? What was the best thing you remember from um, your Wednesday evening. You know, it doesn't have to be content related. If you can get your students to interact with each other, just like you would in the classroom, um, is going to continue to build that, that community environment. We talked a little bit about feedback too, but just wanted to reinforce it again, that feedback is so important, making the students feel and reminding them that they, they are important, their work is important, you value the time that they're spending on this work, and um, you're providing that feedback to them. However, is easier for easiest for you, but also accessible for them. So, if the best way for your EL or your EC students to receive your feedback is by just creating a short little two-minute video for them, then that is great. Um, so, catering to whatever they need. So, what are those specific resources? Um, here are three really, really neat, simple, easy resources for English language learners. Um, Emmy will be dropping those in the chat as well. And I'm just gonna talk through them briefly. As a reminder, and I meant to mention this earlier, you will have access to all of these links in a one-stop shop at the end. If you've been a part of our um, FI Connects in the previous weeks, you know that we have shared with you a running doc of all the links. So do not be overwhelmed by the chat right now and don't feel like you gotta open up every tab and bookmark everything. You're gonna have it all uh, in addition to the slides. So no pressure there. But just wanted to run through quickly on what each one of these are. Sesame Workshop is super cute. Actually, I'm going to be trying it with my, my own four-year-old. Um, it is videos, lessons, activities, and games that um, when, I, um, when I opened it up, it immediately and um, by default was all in Spanish. And um, then Google Translate popped up and said, would you like to tra uh, translate this into English? So it was just with one click, the whole site translated back into English. Um, but some of these activities and resources you can download for offline work as well. So for those of you that are doing nothing online um, and you have access to being able for your folks to print out resources or if you print them out for them, however you have that worked out in your system, you are able to do that. So that was a really, really cute resource. Um, same thing for our next one and the pronunciation, if I do not say it correctly, if someone knows in the chat, you can correct me, um, but I think it's Contico and that is a site that reads stories and sings songs and lullabies in Spanish with supporting activities to do offline. So super cute little short stories, all in Spanish and then, um, 
some activities to go along with those readings. And then the, um, oh good, so someone said that Sesame Workshop is great to use with pre-K learners. Yay, okay. Um, and then the next one is, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one either. I, I think it is new because I was looking up more and more information on it, but um, it's been shared out on the Wide Open School site as a great resource for free downloadable coloring pages um, that are, the artists are um, from across the world. And then the images that the students are coloring are all culturally responsive uh, images. So things that are either religious traditions or just cultural traditions. Um, so that was really, that is a really nice, easy resource. All the coloring pages are pop, just pop up on the one site. You just download it, um, really easy to use. So those are just three simple um, sources. If in the chat, anybody has any other good ones that they've been using, I know um, you probably have some go-tos, but these were definitely catered to your elementary learners. So feel free to share. For our EC uh, students, you probably are familiar with um, the speech talk, talk and text or speech selection where it highlights the text as it reads aloud. You can enable that on the uh, in, on your Apple devices and on your Android devices. Um, Android, it's just called captions, and on Macs, Mac products, it is called speech selection. Um, the other thing that you may not be aware of, but as you are, if you're recording, say, a mini lesson, um, you can enable closed captionings on, closed captioning on your Google Slides and on a lot of other um, screencasting as well. But just here, if you see, um, on my screen down in the bottom left corner, as soon as I click captions and um, I start to talk, it, it, I, don't, I would assume it's showing up on your end how I, that, what I am saying and it picks up just about everything pretty accurately. So this is a nice um, option for our EC students as well. That can be enabled and disabled just as easy as a click. So um, the other option is, I know teachers have been sharing a lot of read alouds and I don't think we can ever have enough of those. So the Indianapolis Public Library on their site, they have listed out hundreds of read alouds that are free. Once again, that link just takes you directly there. All the read alouds are right there. Some of them have supporting uh, activities and games as well. Read Theory is a nice one that is an app so um, or a um, web tool. So internet access would be required for this one, which is uh, appropriate level text for improving students' confidence and comprehension. And you as the teacher can select the text for the students or they can uh, set up a parent portal and the parent selects. They can go through a little assessment to evaluate where they should be and the site offers them the text appropriately. So that is another option. Again, if you have other resources for your EC students, please share that in the chat. In our big curated document of all of the links that we've shared with you before, you'll know that last week we shared some EC resources as well. So if you weren't able to join us, you can get all of those links on the, that big document we're going to share with you too. So to practice what we preach, we're going to take a quick little brain break. Um, during this 15 second brain break, you can stand up, stretch, take a drink of water, whatever, but just don't leave. So here we go. Here's 10, 15 seconds on your own.
All right, and we're back. Ah, that little 15 seconds did so much. Um, so don't be afraid to offer quick little brain breaks, even if you are creating asynchronous content. So if students are watching a recording of you, put in those little brain breaks for them. You can say, all right, go ahead and pause the video, take a break, come back when you're ready, or you can plug in these little brain break timers. You can give them a fun little um, website to go to, to do a little brain teaser, anything quick. 15, and we just took 15 seconds. All right, and so we're gonna keep rolling. How about supports for those students with no tech access um, or low tech access? And then what about those students who have unlimited amounts of resources? Um, you may in your class have quite the spectrum. And so we wanna make sure we can provide supports for all levels. So for those students with no tech, but we want them to in, still obviously engage in some sort of content and um, feel supported during this time. I love finish this picture. And if there are any art teachers in the room, um, you probably enjoy this as well. Finish this picture is just a fun little, looks almost like a comic, but um, it gives you a prompt to say, draw something to save this explorer from the quicksand. Or there's ones that say, draw the cook who would be cooking this meal. Um, I'm trying to think what the other one, there's like 15 options on just this one link that Emmy is sharing with you. She'll also drop in another link um, for finish this picture. And that's more of an imagination. It's a grid that has, I think, nine different um, boxes with little squiggles and then the students just then draw whatever comes to mind. It, you can give them a prompt to um, whatever the content is that you're working on at that time, but um, then they could draw the rest of the picture or demonstrate their learning via this drawing. So she has shared both of those. Another option for our students that we mentioned last week, and maybe you are familiar with it, is that you know our UNC TV programming is offering the educational uh, content on their normal TV schedule. So um, the link that Emmy will drop in here is directly to the UNC TV site, which gives you the list of the programming that they update every week. So this week for elementary, it is uh, around nature and history, I believe. Um, so really cute content. The morning is mostly for our younger learners and then that later afternoon, evening time is more for our secondary learners. So a nice resource to share for families. You can also stream this. So it's not an option just for those no tech folks. It can be for families who um, want to just stream, stream it on a device. And then uh, Genius Hour. And Genius Hour is a, you may be familiar with it, you may do this in your classes already, just a basically a fun way for students to spark their curiosity, try something that they wouldn't have the opportunity to try otherwise. So you may not know that things like Google and pretty much every Google app that we use, like Gmail, Google Docs, um, Google Maps, all of those were created by um, employees that were able to have one hour a week dedicated to genius time, any sort of imagination exploratory time. That all came out of Genius Hour. And actually Google, to this day, practices Genius Hour. Um, they allow 20% of their employees time during the week to do whatever they want to do, whatever they want to learn, research. Um, so the link that Emmy will share about Genius Hour is just a nice way um, the, to get started with Genius Hour. So you may have to set it up a little differently since you know this is a remote environment um, and a lot of the class structures and examples are for a classroom setting but it can be it can be done at home as well and in fact there's probably less restrictions and more opportunity for students to explore and engage 
while at home. So uh, that is an option as well. For our students that may have access to technology, but on a limited basis, um, there are some resources here for you. So this might be for students who are sharing a device with other siblings, they can't get on every day, or um, you know their bandwidth is low and the parents need to use that for their working hours. So these are just some asynchronous options. Last word is a really nice lesson to um, provide students with any sort of text, that whether they read it from a book or they read it from something that you have provided to them. The student picks out, say, two or three quotes or pieces from the passage that they want to discuss and talk with their classmates around and so it's this asynchronous back and forth conversation um, and then you as a teacher would say so and so gets the last word um, so the link will um, send you to the lesson for last word pbs learning as elementary teachers i'm sure you use um, some of these sites but they have been up pbs has updated their site specifically for this remote environment. And so they have broken down their resources by content and by grade. Um, there are videos, lessons, you name it, all the way from pre-K on up. I know that was one thing in some of our feedback, some of you all were saying we'd like more pre-K resources. So pretty much all of these that I've shared today, except for maybe a couple, do have pre-K options. And then bedtime math, this was new to me and I'm not sure if it's new to you, but it is super cute. Um, daily math problems, they can be riddles, they can be little trivia, fun little story problems that are updated each day. And then there is a supplemental activity by broken down by um, grade band. Um, the answers are right there. So if you're sharing this with families and um, they're like, I don't know the answer. I, don't, I need to help my student with this. The answers are on there. Or if you want to uh, set up an asynchronous type of a setting um, where students complete the problem and then share their answers back with you, you can do that too. So really cute uh, resource there. Has anybody used bedtime math before? I'm just curious, because like I said, that was new to me. Um, so yeah, I'd love to know what you think of it if you do end up using it. All right. So then just quickly, we won't spend a lot of time on um, our high tech options, because as we know, there's an overabundance of um, supports for our students with that unlimited access. But something that I came across was really neat, uh, live cooking classes. And these live cooking classes are streamed via Facebook. Um, so the parents would obviously need to have a Facebook account, but um, the live cooking classes take you, it, the link will take you to their site, give you some background, some history on um, what will be made or cooked that day and then um, it sends you over to, to the Facebook Live. So it would be super neat for students to watch that live cooking class and then um, create their own video, their own demo for something that they have cooked at home. Design thinking challenges and passion projects, we've kind of touched on those. You know, these are big chunks and these are big um, pieces, but they're also so open-ended and so um, student-centered, student-directed, that it's kind of what we need right now. Um, letting students just lead their learning and um, that the less least amount of pressure we can put on our kids right now, probably the better. And things like a design thinking challenge or a passion project really lends itself to that. It's so open-ended. The links that are shared in the chat are just ways to get started. Again, most of the direction comes from an in-classroom setting. 
So you would want to modify that for your environment, but um, would just be really neat to see what students come up with. I know there are a fair amount of teachers that are going that route of passion projects right now to give students and, and or genius hour students feel like their learning is still important. We're still here for them. We want them to be engaging in um, engaging together and um, passion projects are a nice way to do that. So I know we're throwing a lot of things at you at, at a rapid pace. <laughs> so how can we make this all stick? Um, how can we ensure that our students are learning some content over this time at home? And as teachers, um, we like control and it feels like everything is out of our control. So how can we have students remember things that we are teaching and sharing with them? So, um, Quick little quiz in the chat. Can you identify all five of these images? You can just answer with yes or no. <laughs> Do you know all five of these? Of course, yes. Looks like maybe four out of the five. Yes. So in our Top left, the green circle, we have Starbucks. The bottom left, we have the Air Jordan logo or Michael Jordan. That middle one is McDonald's. The top right corner is a Diet Coke bottle. And then our bottom right corner is Superman. So four out of the five for most of you, you said you, you were able to identify these. So how did you know that? Because I'm guessing maybe you didn't do a research report or a lengthy paper on the history of um, Superman or you know you didn't necessarily interview somebody from Starbucks and then give a presentation on it but you were able to identify these quickly because they were stored into your long-term memory you see them every day as Michelle said or you've interacted with it because you've eaten it um, even if you don't like McDonald's, you probably were still able to identify it because it attracted your brain's attention and evoked some sort of emotional response. Either you've been there, you have a memory there, you've watched the movie, you drink that type of soda, you have an emotional response to those images and it comes up real quick. Um, the information was presented in small chunks. It was clear and concise. I just gave you those five images and just said, hey, do you know what these are? Can you identify these? There wasn't anything too lengthy or confusing about that. I gave you enough time to process that. I knew that it wouldn't take uh, an incredible amount of time to identify these. So I didn't give you a too long of a time or too short. And then most importantly, you attached meaning to it. So you, um, again, kind of goes back to that emotional response where it's stored in your long-term memory. So like Seth said, yes, repetition, repetition, for sure. Um, so moving from short-term memory to our long-term memory, how can we evoke an emotional response to either this content or this connection, this bond that your students have with you? Um, so this information goes from their short-term memory to their long-term memory. Making learning stick then just by encouraging active engagement. So whether that be um, any little bits of engagement with each other, um, with their peers or with you, we've shared a lot of resources and links over the last few weeks about how students can stay connected with each other, but they want to see you too. They, they um, miss you just like you miss them. So any type of engagement that you can have with them, whether that be sending them a short little message or a quick little video clip that's personalized to them um, is wonderful. Tapping into what students already know. So I think sometimes we, um, because of this, the circumstances and because we have so much content to teach, we um, try to give students just as much information as possible um, without really tapping into utilizing what they already know. So something as simple as in these three weeks since you have been home, what has been your uh, favorite part about this time spent at home? Or what have you 
learned about what about your daily routine, you know, something that uh, they can talk about and they can feel confident about by making it personal and relevant. Storytelling is probably the one of the biggest factors in terms of brain research that allows mem um, memories to go from our short term to our long term memory. There's extensive research in what storytelling does. And this doesn't necessarily mean um, reading a book. This can mean you telling a story and you um, creating that li real life like story while keeping it fresh and simple. Um, one other resource that I did want to mention that was just dropped in the chat is if you were not aware, Time Magazine um, opened up their online content for free for the rest of the year. And so this is Time Magazine for kids. And there's obviously a parent side, um, teacher and student side that just has a plethora of nonfiction material for students to engage with. Um, so check that out if you would like as well. So I'd just like to hear from you. I've been doing too much talking on how you have created learning experiences that stick during this time that you've been at home um, and that you've been away from your students. Maybe it's not something that you've already done, but maybe it's an idea that you have that we've talked about today. So if you wouldn't mind just sharing that in the chat, um, what is sticking? How are you making learning stick? If you want to let us know, Michelle, yes. <laughs> Acting goofy, being yourself, yes. Our personalities don't have to change just because we're behind a camera now. <laughs> Write a summary or a short story. Yes. Oh, how neat. Video sharing of what you're doing, like dancing, gardening, reading, gardening, reading, playing with your pets, any fun activities. Yes. They want it, they they want to see this peek inside your life too. <laughs> I love all these videos, Google Meet. Oh yeah, the personal messages, how nice. Such a good variety. Utilizing a weekly newsletter to catch the kids up on what each other are doing. Oh, that's so that, builds that community, handwriting, birthday cards. Oh, <laughs> bringing in props when you're doing your videos like your pets, I love it. <laughs> yeah, so you all have such great ideas. Um, another resource that um, we've been sharing a lot of Todd Finley's work and he actually comes from ECU, so um, I was in a webinar and one of his students was in that webinar as well. So um, a nice way to make learning stick, as we know, is through exit tickets. And a good teacher knows that utilizing exit tickets um, is so important. So these are just some prompts that you might just send your students off with because we know that what we're asking students to do looks different, um, but we still want that learning to stick. So instead of saying, you know, spend this time answering the next 10 problems on this math assignment, maybe you instead ask, what gave you the most difficulty today? Or something that really helped me learn today. Working with others made me feel blank today. Um, so I just liked these prompts the prompts that um, these exit tickets gave. And Todd Finley has some other good resources. He usually puts all of them on kind of these infographics like this, which is nice, but his site has some other resources as well. So 
We are right at about 2.45 and um, want to give you adequate time to wrap things up, ask any questions, and to make you aware that we are transitioning these sessions to an every other week system. So we will not be back together again until the 22nd of April. So we're alternating weeks with our elementary and our secondary folks moving forward. So mark your calendars for the 22nd. Um, share with others that we'll be back together again for our elementary group on the 22nd. Um, as you know, it is so important to complete our survey. Um, and before I give you that link to the survey, I just want you to know that at, as soon as you click submit on that survey, um, it will give you the information to grab your certificate. So remember when you click submit, it will say, thank you for completing this evaluation. Here is the link to your survey. You'll open up the survey in Google Slides where you can put in your name and um, the date. So here you go, bit.ly slash FI connects. It is in the chat as well. So if you can complete that survey, uh, that will help us as we continue to build out these sessions. Um, and then Emmy did just share probably the most, one of the most important resources, which is that big, long curated document of all the um, links. So it's your one-stop shop of the elementary hub of resources. And someone asked um, about the evaluation. And we will drop that in again. So there's the survey link. And remember, you'll get your certificate after completing the survey. You can um, put your name in it, you can put the date in it, and you'll be good to go. So glad you all could join us today. I think a lot of folks are on spring break. So we had our little smaller of a group today, but I'm glad we were able to share so many good resources and you all are always so engaged in the chat sharing good ideas, which actually makes this really fun. <laughs> yes, Wake County is on spring break. Yep, I think some others are too. I also wanted to make you aware that our recordings of our sessions are uploaded to our Friday Institute um, YouTube channel. And so we will um, be putting this recording up there later on, either today or tomorrow. So the link is there in the chat for you to um, either rewatch this recording or watch some other previous weeks if you weren't able to attend. That is also very helpful to have. If you would like copies of the slides in that big, long curated resources doc, um, there is an editable make a copy version of the slides. And there's also a published presenter view of the slides as well. So if you would like anything that was shared, directly from the slides, you'll have access to that as well. If folks still need us, otherwise um, you all can sign off. Here is our contact information one more time. Um, feel free to reach out to us at any time via email or Twitter. We are both pretty active on um, Twitter. And then of course, 
reaching us by, via email is always a good option. So we'd love to stay in touch with you. And um, if there's anything that you would like us to share on the 22nd that we haven't covered that maybe comes up in these next couple weeks, feel free to reach out to us again. 